Well, we've got another scrapyard e-waste rescue here. We've got what remains of a mystery tower system. This is how we found it. We got it for next to nothing, which is to say like five bucks. And looks like somebody did some customization on the side here. Leads me to believe that possibly, well, I don't know, kind of an enthusiast might have had this system once upon a time. And in the back, interesting again, we've got a uh, Wi-Fi card, a little antenna. We've added in a video card. Looks AGP. Motherboard has the onboard sound and game controller. We have a four port USB 2, it looks like a USB 2 card, a, an old school modem, and a, what looks like probably a 10100 Ethernet card. And it looks like this was running Windows XP Home. It's got an OEM sticker on there. Let's see what's going on inside. Pop inside of the case open. First glance, I thought this was an AMD motherboard, an MSI AMD motherboard, um, especially with the 533 bus. I thought, well, maybe that's uh, socket A or um, something a little uh, later, like an uh, Athlon 64, 64X2. And we've got the video card and it is a GP and we have the other onboard cards that we saw before. And this motherboard is old enough to have a, a CNR slot, which I've never actually seen a card for, one of these guys. And the hard drive, any hard drive was taken out before it was scrapped, which I'm fine with. And this turned out to be 1.5 gigs of RAM. We have a one gig stick and we have a half gig stick. Most important thing, I guess, is to see what we were dealing with CPU-wise. And you love or hate these heat sinks. I hate, I especially hate trying to take them off while the motherboard's still mounted. But for the sake of posterity, let's see what we've got here. And get off there. They have these little clamps on them that they either work or they don't. And this one's working too well. All right, come here, get off there. There we go. Heat sink, clamps, old school heat sink. Very heavy, very aluminum. Turns out, and I'll show some footage of when we took the short video, but this actually wound up being a Pentium 4. This wound up being a P4, P4 2.4. Premium 4 2.4, socket 478. Ah, not especially exciting in the scheme of things, but we'll hang on to it. More interesting, I guess, is what we're dealing with video card wise in here. And uh, this system was not quite the unmitigated disaster that the spider computer was the other day link below this is an nv34 a1 it looks like an oem geforce fx 5200 video card 128 megs of ram very oem very old school very eh well, i guess they're all right nothing spectacular but uh, like i said it looks oem which makes me wonder if this thing was an OEM build that was customized later on with a few add-in cards or if this is how it was purchased. Video card like this, it's low-end, but it could run some games. What else have we got? 
we have the Wi-Fi card. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. It's a D-Link. It's a D-Link DWL 520 Plus. It's probably, boy, it's hard to say. I would have to look this up to see what sort of Wi-Fi speed we would get off this. This could be a Wi-Fi G card. So this could be a um, 50 megabit per second type card. We'll try and figure that out. DWL 520 plus. By the time we post this video, there should be some print telling us what this is. All right. This I found interesting. No screw connecting this, but uh, a Belkin. And Belkin is the favorite brand name. What is that? Best Buy? Best Buy Belkin? Best Buy equals Belkin. I'm trying to remember back in the day. We've got a four port USB 2 card. Five port, one internal. Very interesting. That's kind of neat. I mean, you don't get too many. Um, PCI USB cards like this. That I think is worth hanging on to for an older system that may or may not have enough USB ports. Uh, we've got our, I hate to say it, e-waste modem. Let's see what an e-waste modem looks like. Well, wow, look at that, it meets Canadian regulatory. It's a US Robotics and it's a US Robotics 56K modem. One of the top end of the end of modems. Probably somebody hooking up to AOL. What do you think? AOL, you got mail? All right. US Robotics modem. And finally, wow, the world's smallest NIC card. Look at the size of this bugger. Come here, you. Wow. So a, uh, a Realtek, our little crab guy. Realtek, that's got to be a 10-100 card. Realtek, yeah, it's a TE-100 PCI. So it's a 10-100 TrendNet. Tiny Nick card. I'll hang on to that. Those are fun. Older network cards are fun. Those things are pretty cross compatible. And Realtek will have the uh, drivers available on the internet. We've got our Ultra ATA 66 cable. And you know the difference between these. I know this is a floppy, but the wiring is much denser wiring on this uh, for signal clarity, for greater speed. They're usually compatible backwards with regular IDE cables. And there we have it. The motherboard had the floppy and it had the two IDE channels, primary and secondary. Chipset, MSI 533. And the motherboard is an MS6580. It's an 845PE, MS6580. 845PE Max, so um, 845 chipset, and there we go. Ah, the caps look good. I might hang on to the motherboard. I'm not 100% sure. Socket 478, yeah, I got a bunch of those, and they tend to die after a while, and what am I going to do with more motherboards? But there we have it. Mystery e-waste scrapyard tower disassembled for your pleasure. Leave comments, leave likes. Let me know what you think.